talking to Kimmy just now, he was saying there's uh, a certain amount of familiarity with their offense because there are some similarities to yours. Uh, how helpful is that or is it? You know, it's, I think everybody has some common thread through it offensively now. You know, a lot of offenses are, are somewhat similar in structure, particularly in the running game. They're very similar in some ways to what Chris Alt was when he was there. They're a true pistol, also do some things out of the gun. They do play with the cruiser like we do, you know, a Reese White type guy as a tight end. A lot of times one tight end on, one tight end off. So there is some familiarity. Um, and they do run some loaded stuff with that cruiser loading the quarterback player. They don't incorporate the pitch into it like we do. So other than the guy coming across on the pitch, there is some similarity to what they do. Um, you know, and there was some similarity to what New Mexico State did to a degree in the run game. But um, yeah, th th there, there's some things that are, that are similar to us in there. Coach, it College football, probably your average offensive lineman is maybe 6'4", 300 plus pounds. You got a couple guys who are under that, yet you still uh, continue to have rushing be your bread and butter. Are you recruiting smaller, more athletic guys? Uh, are they guys who are kind of overachieving now? As yeah, as I think something? it's, you know, first of all, you go back to a 6'3", 315 pound center that had an NFL future, all of a sudden being eliminated. Uh, you go back to Johnny Visciano, who is a 305-pound junior right now, who's been eliminated. So there was some um, there was some mixing and matching that had been done here, right prior to the kickoff of the season. But certainly, um, you know, we can play with the non-prototype offensive lineman with what we do. And I think if you really looked at New Mexico State, they were they were the same way. You know, they, they probably had five guys up there that looked kind of like Aaron Jenkins. You know, all six one, uh, three hundred pounds. So um, yeah, you know, we're not the prototype, big, tall, long offensive line. Uh, you, you know, we, we've had some oddities in there. Uh, last year we had Jamal Price line up next to Garrett Adcock. You know, it looked like Mutton Jeff in there. You know, you got six six and six foot. You know, we're a little bit, we haven't got it totally to where everybody's the same. We would have been much more that way this year if we wouldn't have had to set back. But, you know, that's why we do what we do, because we are where we are. And there's a certain pecking order in that food chain in recruiting. And the reality is we're down that food chain and always will be down that food chain. And we have to do things a little bit differently. And that's why we do it. Coach, from the fundamental standpoint of entertainment, what was the entertainment value of the Lobos and Aggies Saturday night? You're probably the judge. You know, I, I look at it through a different prism, you know, or a different lens. Um, you know, my entertainment value is probably pretty simple. It's about when I look up on that scoreboard and we're one point ahead uh, and get to go home and sit on the couch a little bit and watch Sports Center. You know, so I think different people judge entertainment value differently. Um, I'd, I'd have my opinion, but that'd probably be best answered by people that are there just to be entertained. How did it feel? It felt pretty good. It felt pretty good. You know, the atmosphere in the stadium was the best it's been. Uh, it looked like what college football should look like. Uh, the next step for us is to get them to stay. You know, get them to stay. You know, you come out in the, when the second half, it didn't look quite the same in the second half when we came out as it looked at the beginning of the game. So the next step is to play a little better in the first half. So maybe everybody stays in the second half. But as I said yesterday, if I had a chance to leave at halftime after the way we played, I, I might have left too. So, so I don't blame anybody. But I, you know, it was um, you know you guys saw it. You know, I don't think we need to keep talking about it. It was it was a good atmosphere and something hopefully we can build on. It won't be the last big game we play. I can tell you right now, two weeks from now when Hawaii comes in here, it's going to be a big game. So um, hopefully people come back. Coach, could you talk about? He's listed as dude, so he's playing like a dude, huh? Lee Crosby. He's listed as a dude? Yeah, on his Well, we'll change it early. This week he's dude, so. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> glad, you, glad you filled me in on that, too. Um, yeah, he's, 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 a, he's, a, he's a heck of a kid. You know, it was a recruiting battle with him. You know, he's from Baltimore. He was up at Snow College. We went back and forth, actually, with Wyoming. It was back and forth between us and Wyoming. A lot of other visits. 
but uh, we, 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 he came in here last year. We were able to redshirt him. We bit the bullet. Again, we bit the bullet. You know, we could have used him up, and he'd be sitting here his last year of football. So he benefited from it, benefited from it. We benefited from it. He's a physical guy. He likes to play. He shows a lot of energy on the field, very productive. He still doesn't do everything right. You know, playing in nickel position still is a not natural for him as corner would be. But uh, he's, he's got a chance to really develop into one of our better players. On uh, one of Brooks's touchdown runs, uh, Ryan Santos at the snap, he left the center of the field and went to, to uh, defense a quick screen that didn't happen. Was yeah. that just the coverage? Or? There was a couple things. On one of his long runs, uh, he actually shifted and was in motion. It should have been called back. The one on third and five when he just broke it right up the gut. I think it would have been his second touchdown run. Uh, we had four calls in the game that were uh, confirmed that they were poor calls, that being one of them, where the back went in motion, didn't get set. We were kind of like late reacting because we, we had to get set. They snapped it and he creased us. Um, that was the time, um, um, I believe it was Daniel Henry, um, kind of, I think you may, you sure it was Santos or, or not Daniel Henry? Because Daniel Henry one time just jumped out of position on that play and he ran right straight down the field. I think it was probably Daniel Henry. I'll go back and check. But I know for sure on the third and five when he creased us, the one he was in motion and didn't get set, it was Daniel Henry that did that. So I'll go back and check, and I'll look at the one you're talking about, and I'll get to you. Was the hold on the on the kick on uh, Carlos to pick up the Good call. It was on Walsh. It was a good call. Yeah, yeah. It was a shame. That's one of the best. <laughs> that's one of the best returns I've ever seen. But it was that was a legitimate hold. Yeah, that was a good call. Coach, how difficult is it in today's college football to win three in a row? Depends where you are. <laughs> Depends where you are. I don't think Urban had a hard time <laughs> winning three in a row. <laughs> For us, I think it's probably pretty significant. I don't know what the date would be if you go back and check it, but I imagine it was uh, a few years ago. Yeah, it's, it's hard to win one. It's hard to win one, uh, let alone win three. But uh, we're going to give it a shot and try. You know, I think we won four of our last six. So you can take those statistics any way you want. You know, you can, you can do a lot of tweaking with statistics, um, as we've seen here of late. You, you, you can take the good and kind of tweak it to make it look bad if you choose to. Or you can take the bad and kind of tweak it to make good. So that's, um, that, that's, that's why you kind of stay away from all that conversation, really. Coach, going in this week, how thin are you at defensive line? As thin as we were Saturday night. Um, that was thin. You know, uh, we moved Zilts and Chris Lewis to offense. So there's always a trickle-down effect going back to Teo and Johnny Viscano. Viscano. It, it trickles down. We moved two defensive linemen. Now Nick's hurt, William Uday's hurt, and uh, Sam Mabani were hurt going into the game. Then Kenny Aconqua goes out early with an ankle. Um, the bad news is Kenny Aconqua will be out for an extended period uh, with what amounts to a, a, a ligament tear in his ankle. So it's six to eight weeks. Um, the good news, Nick should be able to play. You know, we went easy today. He should be able to play. Uh, William Uday will be able to play. But we're thin. We're thin. You know, Cody Baker, a true freshman, played significant snaps in the game. Uh, we've moved Chris Lee back from nose to end. Uh, Sam Abani won't play. So we've, we're working uh, Smalls, Chris Smalls, a walk on at defensive end. So we're really thin. We're really thin. And uh, that, that, that was a little bit of the problem. You know, we were really excited to see Kenny Aconquil play. You know, we've kind of brought him along, really excited about him. And then, Unfortunately for him, most of all, he goes down with that ankle and never got a chance to really get going against New Mexico State. But the good news is I think Cody Baker, the young freshman from up in Seattle, has a chance to be a pretty good player for us. Coach, a victory must feel good, but how about a come from behind victory against your in-state rival? Drive home a little more pleasant? Without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, that, was, that was big. Um, you know, if ever, chaos could have erupted, it could have erupted. You know, you look at the things that truly take away momentum of a team, giving up big plays. Well, we gave up big plays in the first half. The interception down in the red zone by Lamar. The missed field goal. Uh, 
uh, the holding on the kickoff return. Those take the air out of you. And then you fumble the second half kickoff when you're already down, what was it, 27 to 12? 26-14. Yeah, 26-14. So there were some things that could have made you cave in, particularly in a game like that where it's a rivalry grant game. A lot of people showed up to watch it. It's not going the way you want it to go. Uh, I, I was most proud of that. I was most proud of that because it easily, easily could have happened right there if you weren't prepared for adversity. And I felt like we responded really well with that. As that game went on, we kept getting stronger, stronger, stronger. That's about as good a second half as you could play. It's about as good a second half as you could play. So it was. Good. Down 15, was there ever any thought to put Austin in? We were close. We were close. Uh, even at the end of the first half when we got the football back with about two minutes left or maybe a little under two minutes, we went two minutes, we went hurry up, there was some conversation about maybe we should go with Austin. But I just felt it was too early. I felt it was too early. Then in the second half, no, because we held them to the field goal after the second half fumble by Carlos on the kickoff. Then we take that drive down and score, right? And then we went for two, I think. So now we were, it was back to where we were in our comfort zone and we were in a rhythm and the score allowed us to do that. But only time it was even mentioned was at the end of the first half right there in the two minute. Lamar obviously didn't have a great night uh, passing. Yeah. Uh, did the wind affect him at all, do you think? I think it did a little bit. It was blustery. It, it, it was blustery. and. You can say, well, it didn't affect their kid, but it affected their backup that came in. That kid's pretty good, Tyler Rogers. now. He, he's a lot like Kaufman from Wyoming. I think it did affect Lamar. And I think the first throw of the game, you know, the first play of the game, we have Carlos open for a, what would have been an 80-yard, 75-yard touchdown pass. And the ball kind of, you know, Carlos has to adjust, and it's a tough, and that should have been an easy throw and catch. I mean, that's the first play of the game on offense. I think that got him back a little bit. His first three throws were really poor really poor. And he has not thrown it as good as he's capable of throwing it. And, and, and we know that and he knows that. I, I do think there's a much better Lamar Jordan throwing than what we've seen yet. And we just have to stay patient. Um, you know, no question the second half of Wyoming and the second half of this game, we buttoned it up and just ran it every down. Would we throw it one time in the second half? You know, you do what you have to do, but we'd all like to make it a little easier by spreading them out a little more and throwing it. That's players and coaches alike. Coach, uh, any more dancing in the future? <laughs> I'd like to say it would have been a lot better if I was prepared. <laughs> but the truth is, it probably would have been exactly the same if and, even if I did prepare for it. Um, one thing you notice, it's about having the cold drink in the hand. That goes back to my early days. The only time I ever danced, there was a cold drink in there. And being able to take, the only thing I'm proud of is being able to take that drink and kind of transfer to the other hand when the move required it. Other than that, um, um, I think that's the last chapter. I'm not sure it's the last chapter, but that's the last time we'll talk about it and the last time we'll, we'll, we'll have discussions about it. It looked like you had uh, some of the movements down. It looked like you knew something. You, you saw some tape or something? Man, that was freelance. <laughs> that was freelance all the way. I mean, there was no theme. There was no rhythm. There was no rhyme. Didn't know it was going to happen. They kind of talked me into it there at the last second. But again, the results would have been just as funky looking if I'd have practiced all week, man. Because you, you know your limitations. I've been there before. I know my limitations. They've been on ABC, ESPN now. ABC's a family, you know. They got Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> no? One of the stiffest men ever alive is standing <laughs> right here. You know? So let's let's let's. I appreciate it, man. It's, it's fun to win. Now we just got to go try to win another one because it's all about the difference between winning and losing, right? It's all about it. But it's nice that people just get a glimpse of how much, how much passion how much goes into everything we do. And I think um, anytime people have a chance to share that, uh, I'm proud of them for it to see it. Um, there were a bunch of coaches back here in the corner too that should have been in that clip as well. I mean, you, you talk about guys that have poured their heart and soul into this program. And um, um, trust me, there, there's, there's a lot of commitment and a lot has been involved with this. And, um, you know, a lot internally. You know, sometimes it's easy externally to kind of show 
how much passion's involved or how much involvement you have externally. The real truth is internally how much involvement is made by players and coaches and how much sacrifice is made, right? It's not about the public relations piece. It's about truly what's involved internally. Coach, uh, bring up Rodgers as the kicker, the new kicker. It was it a tough decision to make that? This Absolutely. Week? Absolutely. Uh, I'm a big Jason Sanders fan. I'm a huge Zach Rogers fan. Uh, we all see what that is. You guys see just what I see. The Jason Sanders is an unbelievable weapon. He's sixth in the country in percentage of touchbacks right now. He's got a cannon for a leg, but he's missed four field goals in the last three games. And, and uh, Zach Rogers, he can make those field goals. He's dependable. You know, he's not the home run hitter, but he's going he's to get you the single and he's going to get on base. And I hate to do it, but it's something we have to do right now. We have to do it. What's Coach, what's the second half, your backs were hitting that hole yeah. fast with velocity and power. Was there a difference in their effort from first half to second half? Because the secondary guys for the Aggies and their backers we're paying a price yeah. tackling your guys. I think that's very observant. You know, we, we, in the first half, we ran seven inside zones, seven times where we said we predetermined we're running the inside zone. We ran over 20 in the second half. Again, adjusting how they play you. They were so, so much effort on running people outside to take the quarterback in the pitch. At some point, you're, you're, you're swimming upstream trying to get that ball out in the perimeter as much. You know, um, um, Lamar still ran for 150 yards or something. But in the second half, there were tw over 20 predetermined inside zones. And um, Gibson really hits it. And we've got some other guys that hits, hits it. You know, Presley's not the guy that just hits it as much. He's a little more, I call it the air comes out of the balloon. You know how you see that, that kind of thing going. Um, but yeah, we got some backs that'll hit it. We got, we, we got some backs that hit it, and that's what the second half was. What's that strange? Compared to Sanders. Oh, you know, he's a, he's a 45-yard guy, 42, 43, you know, depending on which way the wind's blowing. But he's, he's you know, he's got enough range. We go for it on fourth down anyhow. Yep. Yeah, right? Well, that's why, that, that, that's what, when you get in that 25-yard yeah. range, you got a decision. Exactly, to exactly, yeah. exactly. What do you have to do to be successful with that and that? You know, one, we got to handle winning a rivalry game. You know, they have to handle losing a rivalry game. So with each thing comes their own challenges. So handling winning a game, being mature enough to realize that now the competition reality-wise does get stronger, does get better as we get into the core of the Mountain West Conference, and understanding how we win and what we are, just how precise we have to be, how we have to work for everything we get, and most of all, how we have to improve. I mean, we, we have to get better. You, you guys see it just like I see it. We have to get better to go win in this Mountain West Conference. We have to go get better to win in this conference. There's no, you know, I'm not teasing anybody. Um, our play, players aren't teasing anybody like, oh, man, they're this. We are what we are, and we have to get better to go win. That's the reality.